From the High Definition Production Center of Troy University's Broadcast and Digital Network and Troy campuses around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision Weekly. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision Weekly. We're glad you joined us for this look at what's happening in and around Troy University. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor. Well, one of the biggest rivalries in the Sunbelt Conference was decided last week as the Trojan football team won the annual Battle for the Belt against South Alabama Thursday night in front of a large contingent of traveling Trojan fans. Jamal Kennedy has the highlights. Two coaches, two teams, one belt. Oh wait, wrong belt. Yeah, that one. It all went down at Lad People Stadium in Mobile on Thursday night. The Jags and the Trojans and the Trojans came out on top 28-21. to 21. Huge win for our program today. Um, I thought this was a great college football game. Tremendous atmosphere. Um, excited to see our students. I thought our students and our, and our fans, bands showed up and, and really were active participants in the game. They were loud. The defense showed mental toughness after allowing 21 first half points to the Jags by coming out and holding the Jags to zero second half points. Much credit to Vic Coney, our defensive coordinator, and our defensive staff. We bent, we bent some tonight, and that was kind of the plan going in. We wanted to make them put some drives together. We bent, but we didn't break, and uh, I thought it was big. And it was a thrilling 28 to 21 victory for Troy, and a game that went all the way down to the last play. And well, as for the battle for the belt, I think it's important to, to recognize rivalries, and this was a rivalry. I know I think South had theirs in a case, and and, it, and it's something that we're proud of. It's something we're proud of. But before the Trojans could bring home the belt, some crucial fourth quarter plays happened, both good and bad, including junior Jordan Chun's second fumble of the game that almost proved costly. He's got, he's got character, he's got, he's got stuff about him, and, and I knew he would bounce back, and, he, and he's, a, he's a great player. You no, know, I, I got down on myself because, you know, it was bottom, at the end of the game, you know, it was very close. But, I mean, my teammates came up and, you know, uplifted me and told me to get back. You know, we still going to need you at the end, so I appreciate them for that. To some, it felt like a home game for the Trojans. So what did the team think about all the fans and students that traveled in for the game? Oh, it was, it was outstanding. That, like, we got the best fans in the world. To me, we have the best fans in the world, and I love them to death. Because they bring us energy and the ricochet through us, and we just, it's just a lot of energy throughout the whole crowd. I thought our, our when things got down a little bit in the game for us, when we turned the ball over, uh, I thought they picked us up. With six wins, the Trojans are now bowl eligible. They'll have the week off before returning to action on November 5th against UMass and Veterans Memorial Stadium. Good luck. And next week, Troy University will officially dedicate the brand new Janice Hawkins Cultural Arts Park. The park will contain one of the largest displays of Chinese terracotta warriors outside of China. Those warriors are finding a spot in their new home this week. Sarah Singletary gives us a look at the new addition. The Janice Hawkins Cultural Arts Park is in its final stages. Terracotta warriors are being lowered into place in the park, a sign that the project is almost complete. Well, we're actually very excited right now. You can see just behind me, they're actually being craned into position and we're filling our first pit with a combination of archers and infantry. So to actually see them finally manifest on site after all the weeks of design and all the preparatory work, it's uh, pretty exciting. And as the Janice Hawkins Cultural Arts Park nears completion, this space will be filled with terracotta warriors, making Troy, Alabama the site of one of the largest displays of terracotta warriors outside of China. No one really knows what to expect, uh, how the public will receive it. Will this become an, a, an attraction or an amusement? Will people travel to Troy just to see the Warriors? It's quite possible. Uh, is it a, a step forward with our relationship with Asia and the East? Absolutely. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, reflection of the relationship that the Chancellor has with Dr. Hu Bao Zhu. And uh, yeah, we're just, uh, we're not really sure what's going to happen, but we think it's going to be pretty good. And now that the dust is starting to settle and finishing touches are being made, Marquette reflects on his relationship with not only the design project, but also with Troy University. It's a family now. We just work together. We cover each other. We make it happen. Uh, the students have been spectacular. What they've learned and what they've demonstrated in such a short period of time is uh, just marvelous. Over 200 warriors will be on display in the park. Sarah Singletary, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The dedication ceremony for the new Janice Hawkins Cultural Arts Park will be next Friday at 4 p.m. Well, Troy University now knows who will represent the school in the next Miss Alabama pageant in June. A new Miss Troy University was crowned over the weekend. Chelsea Law introduces us to the new Miss Troy. Beauty, style, and grace. 
13 lovely young women competed against each other Saturday night for the crown that would make them the new Miss Troy University. The contestants competed in three categories, question and answering, health and wellness, and talent. But at the end of the night, only one took the crown. I am absolutely in shock. I had a really clean day, but everybody else was so, so incredible. It's been a great week, and so I'm really just so honored to be able to represent our university. Overall with emotions, Moore has some high expectations for the upcoming year and is ready to get involved. I just feel like it's going to be a really good opportunity to be able to um, reach out to our campus and get involved in our community, and I'm very, very excited. Even former Miss Choi shares in the excitement with Moore, but gives her a little advice on what will come with her new crown. Well, being Miss Choi, you will never stop. Um, you're going to be very, very tired throughout this next year. You know, you're going to make so many appearances and meet so many different people and um, you're going to have a platform and a school to represent, so that's a huge responsibility in itself. But um, it's truly an exciting adventure, and I'm just so excited for her. Chelsea Law, Troy, Trojan Vision News. And Troy University athletes are known for hitting the gym so they can beat other teams, but this week the Trojans were lifting weight to try and beat, beat, beat breast cancer. Antonia Reese shows us how. Students and athletes took to the benches, but this was far from a normal workout. Money was raised through the entry fee to the event, which was $5 per student. The money will go to fight breast cancer. Almost 50 athletes and students were in attendance, where at least one participant from every chore sport team was represented. Competing to see who could bench the most weight. Finishing on top of the contest were chore students India Somerville for the women and Taylor Edwards for the men. I knew I was strong coming in, but strongest girl, I mean, it's it's exciting. And then like your adrenaline high and everybody in your face, you, you can't help but to get the weight up. So it feels good. We prepare every day. Like, I mean, it's not a day off preparing for football. And, uh, you know, I just coach Horton, coach Shaughnessy used to be my weight coach. Uh, I've been like 400 pounds in high school. Um, but since I've gotten here, I've gotten stronger, obviously. Uh, Troy's got a great weight program, uh, great athletic department, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's pretty easy. Money was raised through the entry fee to the event, which was $5 per student. The money will go to fight breast cancer. So October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we just wanted to make sure that we were doing all we could to raise awareness about this cause and um, raise money for research. The event benefited in a big way. It helped the organization in the charity effort. Raised right at $500. You know, we had this uh, bench off tonight, and I think it went real well. Uh, we had several of our athletes participate, uh, almost 50. Uh, which I thought was a really good turnout, and uh, all of them were really excited about what they were doing and the, and the calls they were uh, lifting for. Antonio Reeves, Troy, Troy Division News. Trojan Outreach traditionally helps students with their mental health with events on campus, but recently they held an event to help students with their overall health. Sarah Singletary explains. Glucose screenings, body composition measurements, and massages were only a few of the options offered at Thursday's health fair that was hosted by Trojan Outreach. Local vendors were represented at the fair alongside Troy's very own Kinesiology and Health Promotions Club. One KHP club member explained the group's contribution to the fair, the machine that measures body composition. It tests your uh, body fat percent, your bone percent, um, pretty much gives you an overall reading of your health so that you can estimate what you should be working on as far as health-wise to be a healthy individual. Householder says that most people, himself included, were a little surprised by their results. I thought I was very healthy when I walked in here today and uh, after I got my body composition it said a little bit different so it shows me that I need to work a little bit harder to truly achieve physical health. And while finding out how much of your body is fat may not sound like a ton of fun, one Trojan Outreach member encourages students to take charge of their health. As students, we really need to be taking our own health into our hands. We're, a lot of us are finding independence for the first time in college, and so it's really important to get that all under control and learn how to manage it. The health fair was a one-day event. Sarah Singletary, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Singing and dancing during the rise of the Nazi party in Germany was brought to life this week on the Trojan Center stage as the Department of Theater and Dance presented the musical Cabaret. T.R. Malone gives us a behind the scenes glimpse of the production. Cabaret, cabaret, cabaret. 
the dance and theater department have come together to bring to Troy Cabaret, a musical about an American writer who travels to Berlin, Germany to write a story, but finds himself swept into many distractions. It's the first time in a few years that the theater and dance department has put on a show together, and so it's super unique. You get like all the elements, the amazing dancing, the phenomenal like actors and stuff. It's great. Wentz says although the musical is a sight to see, filled with humor and drama, it's also filled with a message that can relate to today's society. This year specifically with it being an election year, it's very, it's got a lot of underlined like political messages and I think that's something everyone should brush up on. After 12 long weeks filled with practice, the cast is confident Cabaret will be a crowd pleaser. Cabaret is a huge ensemble of people on stage just performing. And that's what this show is really about, is performing to the people. It's a whole play about distraction and performance, which, is, which I think people will really enjoy. Cabaret will show in the Trojan Center Theater October 27th through the 30th at 7 p.m. Tierra Malone, Troy, Trojan Vision News. We'll take a short break, but when we return, we'll take a look at some of the early Halloween fun on campus this week. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Why is Connor having trouble focusing in school? Having trouble finding Connor's middle school? Would you like directions? No, why is Connor having trouble focusing in school? Finding lowest airfare to Istanbul. No, I'm, I'm tired of fighting with him over homework. Home walk restaurant, need a review? No, I need help. He's very smart, but his mind it wanders. He's disorganized. I think I understand. Oh, good. French fries, finding best potatoes. No! Russet, fingerling. You can't go. Uh, why don't you understand me? Sorry, I was trying to show how Connor feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. Exploreunderstood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. Now back to Troy Trojan Vision News Weekly. Halloween is Monday, but the children of Troy University students, faculty, and staff got an early treat courtesy of Troy University sororities. Ryan Renfro takes us to Haunted Hill. Ba, 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 da, da. It began over 30 years ago. For many years we had Pace Haunted Hall. But what was then known as Pace Haunted Hall, you may know now as Sorority Haunted Hill. And we do this every year really as a thank you to the faculty and the staff. On Wednesday night, Troy University faculty and staff were accompanied by Troy students and local Troy residents for a night of games, trick-or-treating, and Halloween spirit. It kind of like gets us out of that classroom setting into, you know, Halloween spirit and feel like it's just a great time to you know, get back to the community. Now because all the houses on Sorority Hill are in one central location, one Greek member involved says Haunted Hill offers a safer environment for trick-or-treating and not to mention free candy. To be trick-or-treating all in one location, close to campus, um, with a lot of great people, uh, great college students, it's a good interaction for us. And with Halloween creeping in, Patterson says there's more to Haunted Hill than costumes and candy. I think it's just important for um, all of us to remember how important it is to serve others and it's just a great lesson for, for our greats. And from Mickey Mouse to Batman, the Halloween spirit was on full display. Ryan Renfro, Troy, Trojan Vision News. And the young ones weren't the only ones getting in on the Halloween fun. Troy students got an early Halloween scare thanks to the University Activities Council. Samantha Charles shows us how. With Halloween right around the corner, the UAC and Freshman Forum combined forces to get students into the Halloween spirit. We were looking for something that would be great for the Halloween um, time and Haunted House just came to mind because a lot of people like the thrill of being scared and it was something um, that we haven't done before in the past. The line was scary, but so was the haunted house, as some students waited for over three hours to be spooked in Sartain. 
It's a big haunted house that um, we have a bunch of actors who are scaring people throughout it and then you go into like a bigger haunted area. It's just a really cool event for people who want to get in, um, in the festivities of Halloween. Since no cameras were allowed inside the haunted house, I made my way to the back of the line to see what the students were expecting. I expect to see some clowns. I do expect to see that. Some, you know, it's classic to have chainsaws, so if they don't got that, it ain't a hot house. Dogs, I'm getting out of them. But if it's like something I can hit, then I ain't gonna get scared. But what did they have to say after? The atmosphere in there is unreal. It's scary, it's terrifying, your heart is beating a hundred beats per minute, you know, it's just like, it's just one of those things where it's just, it can be terrifying. I'm not one to get scared, but I was, I was a little scared in there. If you didn't get the chance to run from a clown, there's always next year. Samantha Charles, Troy, Trojan Vision News. A Food Network cooking competition got the Trojan treatment as the dining hall became the venue for Chopped University, a three-night event where students competed to see who was the best chef. Rachel Wilkerson has the story. Troy University created their own version of the television network series Chopped to provide a fun way for students to be involved with the dining hall. Four teams compete to become the Chopped University winner. Tuesday, one team was eliminated, leaving three teams battling it out for 45 minutes in the entree round. They'll have a box where we give them ingredients and they have to make their own entree. And um, we have things like things that you would find in your dorm that you could make a meal out of. And the secret ingredients in each box consisted of chicken breast, Rice Krispie treats, ramen noodles, and grapefruit. Along with those four items, they can create anything their mind can come up with. Their pantry will be the entire dining hall, so they can go to any of these stations and grab extra items from that um, to build their dishes. Just like the CHOP series, each team only has 45 minutes to come up with their entree. And with only one minute left, the main goal is to get everything on the plate or else they're chopped. And we're looking at how the food tastes and then how it's plated. So is your plate clean or is it all just on top of each other? And so that's kind of what we're looking at when we're you know, judging the plates. The was to give students an opportunity to get behind the stove and creatively compete. The winners will receive a certificate that will be displayed in the dining hall for bragging rights. But in the end, it all came down to an overpowering use of the special ingredient grapefruit that led to the Team 1K being chopped. The two remaining teams will compete in the final round tomorrow. Rachel Wilkerson, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Wild animals on the quad would traditionally be a cause for concern, but Tuesday morning they were there to promote conservation efforts through Troy's Environmental Club. Jordan Elston explains. Troy University's Environmental Club brought wildlife to campus Tuesday afternoon with a wildlife expo. It's just part of the Environmental Club likes to educate people about um, environmental pro um, problems and needs and things like that and just the environment in general, and Big Ben's a great way to do that. Big Ben Wildlife Sanctuary focuses on providing therapy to injured animals like Little Stink Pot here so that they can return to 100% and be released back out into the wild. We take in animals that have been injured or abandoned or orphaned by their parents, and we rehabilitate them and we release them back out into the wild. Not only does Big Ben foster a rehabilitation program for the animals, but they also educate students on what to do if they see an injured animal. We're also education, educating people on what to do when they come across an animal, whether it be a bird, uh, a possum on the side of the road. The animals that are most commonly found during the fall are baby deer. People come across them and be like, oh, a baby deer, i got to take care of it. So um, right now it's, it's baby fawns, but um, if they're hurt or injured, uh, we want them to protect themselves as well as the baby. So if you have a towel or a blanket and you were to just kind of throw it over the baby and very carefully pick it up and keep it in a dry, quiet, dark, warm area until you can get it to us. Hyde also says that timeliness is an important factor whenever you come across an injured animal. Um, the sooner they get to us, the better. A lot of people keep them for five days thinking they can raise them. You've just done more damage than anything because you've stressed out the animal. Everybody's petted the animal. You've probably sleeping with the animal and that's not what they're used to and that stresses them out. So by the time we get to them, they are probably now, um, not only are they malnourished, but they are probably extremely dehydrated and very, very scared. The Johnson Center for the Arts is focusing this fall season on cowboy and western art. 
And on Thursday, they made that focus local by bringing in an area contemporary cowboy artist. Sarah Singletary has the details. The Johnson Center for the Arts is now featuring contemporary cowboy artist Lisa Stokes. The miniature display of Stokes art, which is currently mixed with a Wild West student art show, serves as a preview of a much larger collection. I do a lot of shows in Texas every year, and so I actually went to Texas and got some from the stores there. And so I brought those back here, and then they came to the studio and kind of pick and choose what they wanted. And the center will be picking and choosing a lot more pieces from Stokes in preparation for her much larger display in the spring. We've already started ordering and bringing things in and I have some really awesome, huge uh, five foot by four and a half feet cowgirl caddy. It took me four years to do. So I'm pretty excited about that. And um, some long horse, long horn steer artwork that I've been working on for about three years. So this, it's not even on my website yet, so I'm pretty excited. Stokes travels around the country both selling and sharing her art, but she says the true inspiration lies back at home in good old Pike Road, Alabama. Through my life, I became a, early on a fashion model and print model, and I thought, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And then when I was 25, I said, I just want to go home. I want to go back to the ranch and working cows, and I think you just have a passion for it when you've done it, and it's kind of in your heritage, and this is just bringing it all together. The Troy University Gospel Singers held their fall concert, Servants for Christ, in Long Hall last Friday. The performance had both the choir and the audience up and dancing. Nathaniel Rodriguez has the story. The Troy University Gospel Singers brought the house down last Friday night in the Long Hall Band Room during their fall concert, Servants for Christ. The performance included singing, dancing, and speeches from a local Baptist preacher. According to Dr. James Brown, the students in the choir had a hand in parts of the performance. I had a vision of what I wanted. I wanted to get um, mimes and dance into the program, um, but I talked to the students and I asked them to bring forth some ideas. Um, but I already had chosen the mimes to do things with the choir. As far as the dancing was concerned, um, there's a young lady who does praise dance, and that was Haley. And I just asked her, choose a piece that you can dance with us on. The concert's theme of servitude came from a mission trip Brown took to Costa Rica during the summer. During my time of um, laying foundation for a church floor and working with children in ministry and women in ministry, that um, I wanted these students to understand what it is to be a servant and to help others in need and to be there for not only each other but for people in our community. One singer said he enjoyed the performance and the impact it had on the people present. I am extremely satisfied. That was an amazing performance, actually. I believe that people were moved tonight. I believe God did make a way. God did work and he did move and I'm excited and I think everything was successful and we did better than in practice. So I'm, I'm ready for the next concert. A number of the audience said the performer's energy captivated. Well, I like, I really enjoy the energy that the students put into it. And I mean, they're, they really show a passion for, you know, praising God and being, you know, totally involved in the worship experience. And now that their concert is done, the Troy University Gospel Singers will prepare for two more performances this semester. One at the park dedication next week and another at the Sounds of the Seasons concert. Nathaniel so Rodriguez, Troy, Trojan Vision News. It's time for our last break, but when we return, we'll learn about the upcoming concert chorale performance. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. When you're out there, there's no telling what you'll find. I see it! I see it! Oh, look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. <laughs> Find yours at discovertheforest.org. This is Thomas. During the day, he works in research. And at night, he's a warrior. Soon he'll have a degree from Troy University, a historic and affordable public university with flexible online and in-class courses, and professors who know their students by name you love and be great at it. That's the warrior spirit. Learn more at troy.edu slash working warrior. Now back to Troy Trojan Vision News Weekly.
Troy's Concert Chorale has a performance coming up next week. We'll learn more about the show in this week's Trojan Talk. Hello and welcome to Trojan Talk. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor. Today we'll learn about the upcoming Concert Chorale performance. My guest today, conductor of the Concert Chorale, Diane Orlowski. Diane, thanks for joining me thanks, today. Thanks, Aaron. And uh, as usual, when you're here, you're talking about some singing. Uh, Always. And this time, we're talking about the Concert Chorale and their upcoming performance. Tell us a little about what, what we're expecting from the Concert Chorale. On uh, November 6th, it's a Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock at Bush Memorial Baptist Church. We're doing our fall performance called Songs of Devotion. It's their sort of a theme this year. A theme. And so I would think with a, a theme of Songs of Devotion, we're thinking maybe some, some sacred, uh, mm -hmm. maybe hymns, things of that sort. Typically in the fall, mm -hmm. I program program an all sacred concert. Um, this one has two larger works. Um, one is a Magnificat with a special guest, Dr. Michael Huff on trumpet. It's majestic and um, it's quite a, an incredible piece. Uh, another one is a Requiem uh, and it, uh, so you obviously see the flow there. We've done doing several Ave Marias and then a couple of uh, more well-known pieces. And of course, and that was one of the things when you, you come into this for, for people that are fans of choral music, uh, there's a, always a variety. It, it usually present a variety, but it's one of the things, how much of it is going to be something new to the audience member? How much, how much of it is going to be things that they're more familiar Probably with? Probably so. about half and half. Mm -hmm. So I, I do like to program new things, things that uh, perhaps are not performed very often. And um, and then I do also like to to set people at ease a little bit and they go, oh, I've heard that. And oh, isn't that lovely? And of course, and, and potentially maybe some of the songs that they may have heard, but maybe familiar or sound a little bit right. something like they've heard right. before. Or the text mm -hmm. that they're familiar with. And so, and now let's talk a little bit about the, the, uh, the group itself for, for because it, everyone knows there's a variety of choral Correct. groups here yeah. on campus and and sometimes they might get confused as to which group <laughs> is which and and size and style right. so talk a little about the group and the makeup of this group this so. con uh, concert crowd is a, a slightly smaller ensemble we average between 40 45 singers um, all majors again and um, they specialize in what we would call um, more chamber music for smaller choirs mm -hmm. or more contemporary, meaning that we do a lot of new music, music written by the up and coming young choral conductors and composers. And so, and with this, uh, it is a, as we mentioned, sacred, talking about devotion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would think that uh, the location kind of helps contribute to the, uh, the overall ambiance of the performance. The good folks at Bush are so accommodating and are the acoustics in there lend themselves to a small group like, like we have. And of course, uh, and it, it, I guess it kind of helps to have folks that are showing up to a church to kind of hear some sacred and devotional type tunes. And one nice thing is that we're having a high school choir come and join mm -hmm. us on this event, which is kind of unusual. They're coming to us uh, from Jackson, Mississippi, and there will be 55 young voices hmm plus our 45, so we're gonna raise the roof a little bit. <laughs> um, and their director is Scott Sexton, who is a native of Troy. Okay. So he's coming back home and bringing his group, and it'll be quite special, I think, for, for those people that know Scott. And, and of course, and how is it to, I guess, incorporate these younger voices? Because obviously, you get the chance to work with your students right. throughout the, the semester, but uh, incorporating an entirely different group, especially of younger voices, uh, any special challenges there? Well, I taught Scott, mm -hmm. Scott was our student, student yes. and he's a graduate of Troy so um, he kind of knows what goes on in here mm -hmm. and um, I actually FaceTime them okay and so I'm able to give them comments and uh, we do that through your medium yeah. <laughs> so technology is helping That's bridge exactly this right. gap and, right. and bringing the younger people mm -hmm. involved but obviously I would think having a, a, a younger group this high school choir coming over uh, opens up maybe some eyes, a recruiting possibility to get here, for you to hear some new voices and give these, these students a chance to see Troy. And get them across state line mm -hmm. and see what we have to offer here at Troy University. So it's a win, win, win. And the audience gets the, um, the wonderful addition of being able to hear some of these works done together. And of course, and and then they get a chance to perform in front of a, right. a, a new group and, and have exactly. a little bit of fun with it as exactly. well. And 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 I I would think that it's a it's a good opportunity also for your students to have the chance to to work with other voices to you know because they may they're 
singing with the same voices and a chance to mix it up a little well, bit. Well, one of our pieces is actually a two choir number. Mm -hmm. So we sing, they sing, we sing, they sing, and it's written for that. <laughs> so yeah. it'll be quite, it'll be quite fun. Interesting. Now, for anyone out there who's interested, we, we mentioned before, but kind of give us the rundown when and where. Uh, Sunday, November 6th at 3 o'clock. The concert should last a little bit, of, about an hour or so. And uh, admission, as always, is free. As always, is free. So an opportunity to, to hear some uh, sacred and uh, some devotional type songs from the concert chorale and, and a young choir from Mississippi mm -hmm. as well. So a chance to have a little bit of fun and listen to some music by the concert chorale. And so they'll go out smiling. Go I guarantee. out smiling. All right. Well, uh, thanks for joining us as always. And thank good you. luck with the show. Thank so, you, Aaron. And thank you for joining us on today's edition of Trojan Talk. And that's what happened on the last week of October 2016. To find out what's happening throughout the week, you can tune in to Troy Trojan Vision News at 5, 6, 30, and 10, 30, Monday through Friday. We hope you join us again next week for another edition of Troy Trojan Vision Weekly. Have a good week.